Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Jay Wilson. I'm a content creator over at Data Crew, and today I'm really excited to talk to you about GitHub Code Spaces. If you're anything like me, a month ago, I'd literally never heard of GitHub, that's the lie. I'd heard of GitHub Code Spaces. I didn't know what it was and I didn't know how to use it. And in fact, I was talking to one of my buddies, Elliot, who is also a content creator on the channel. Um, I was like, Elliot, you need to get into GitHub Code Spaces. He's like, Jay, give me the skinny. What's it all about? Why should I use it instead of all of the other tools that I use? And that's why we're making this video, specifically for Elliot, so that Elliot starts using GitHub Code Spaces. If you're not familiar with his work, the dude's brilliant. Um, I'll link his channel below. Um, but I just wanted to let you know why this video exists. Um, so GitHub, <laughs> GitHub Code Spaces. I've been working on building a software library here in um, GitHub. And what does it do? What's it look like? Well, I've got some documentation for you. Isn't it beautiful? Um, if I go under roots, basically what I'm working on doing is I'm building a library that will allow you to maybe query Domo's um, data set API using SQL. And I've built this library. I mean, it has tons of functionality, but I didn't have any documentation, so nobody knew how to use it. And I was like, well, maybe I can solve that. And again, one of my good buddies in the Domo community that um, uh, from Crystal Ballers, Andrew Chaffin and uh, John, they introduced me to NB Dev, which is built on Quarto, which is this whole Jupyter notebook thing that allows you to write software and build documentation at the same time. So I've defined a function called query data state private. And here I'm giving you an example of how to use it. And I'm printing the results. And we can see this is a real data set that's coming from Domo Dojo. OK, so none of this is GitHub code spaces specific. This is just a, a library called nbdev that generates really, really, really pretty documentation. Let's talk about how we built the dang thing. And we built it using code spaces. Now, if I click on the code button, your default is going to actually be this local tab that will allow you to clone the repo to your computer, do development locally on your computer, and then you know do git commit, git push to push your changes up to the cloud. And that's fine. But do you guys remember when Dobo Jupyter came out? The thing we were excited about Jupyter Workspaces was that now all of the management of the environment of, of, of Python, the pre-installed libraries, all of the uh, uh, Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebooks, all of that was managed by Domo. And I could go to any browser, log into Domo Dojo, and access the development environment and get straight to work. Codespaces does the same thing for free. Let me say that again. Codespaces does the same thing for free. And it's actually integrated into GitHub through their user interface. So instead of cloning my repo locally to my computer, I'm going to clone my repo into a code space. Now, um, GitHub will generate random names, in this case, crispy umbrella for your code space. It will open up in your browser, and it will look shockingly similar to Visual Studio Code. Maybe it's because Microsoft owns GitHub. Um, but I have no complaints there, because one of the things I like about this Visual Studio Code integration is the fact that all of my, um, it's still thinking, all of my settings for how I configure Visual Studio Code locally on my computer can transfer automatically to the GitHub environment so that it looks the same. All of the add-ons that I use have been uh, kind of pre-installed through the account settings sync feature. So GitHub knows who I am um, in GitHub, and it's the same account that I use for Visual Studio Code locally on my machine. So it syncs a lot of the pre-installed add-ons. Pretty powerful stuff. OK. Now, this is an NB dev specific thing, this library that I'm using. Um, but I can create a file called settings.ini, where I can say, hey, these are some of the libraries that I'm using to develop my software. And if I just type pip install, instead of having to remember it every time I spin up a new code space, nbdev, not code spaces, but nbdev, will read in that settings.ini 
and say, oh, yeah, here's all of the libraries and dependencies that your software that Jay's developing needs. That's more a plug for NB Dev than, than um, code spaces, but OK. Now, one thing that is cool about code spaces is that it automatically, you know, I didn't have to type in pip install Python or however you, you know, and download Conda and all, or Chocolati or whatever, right? All of the software is just there. It spins up and it works. And Elliot, if you leave your laptop at home and you happen to be visiting a friend and that friend is just like, I don't know, boring, you can go to their computer, you can log on to your GitHub on their computer, and you can instantaneously get into code spaces and start typing code, because that's a normal thing to do when you visit someone. Um, all right, let's kind of look at this a little further. So I do all of my development, ultimately, in what is a Python notebook, just like Domo Jupyter Workspaces. Right? But theoretically, I could be doing JavaScript or any programming language, scripting language. Um, but that's just what this library happens to be built in. But again, all of the software is installed and managed um, by code spaces. I don't have to install pip install Jupyter Notebooks. It's already there for me. Cool. So what are some other things that I like about code spaces? Well, you'll notice, in addition to writing my code, I also have a sample implementation of getting a data set schema. I have a sample implementation so that when you come to my library and go to the documentation, you can see how it's supposed to be used. Now, in order to get a schema for a data set, I have to authenticate. I need a Domo access token. I'm not going to store that in clear text. I'm going to store that as an environmental variable. And a lot of us are familiar with using .env files to manage that. But of course, you know, you have to .git ignore your .env file. Otherwise, you publish your .env file to GitHub and everyone can see it, right? And that just makes one level, uh, like one barrier to getting up and running if I go over to my friend's house and try to clone re their, my repository to their computer, I have to recreate a new .env file. And that's a pain. The alternative to that The alternative to that is managing my secrets in GitHub. Now, there's two places I can do this. I can go to my settings folder, or settings, settings, <laughs> and I can jump down to code spaces. And here, I can, I can add in code space secrets that I want to, be to make available to multiple repositories. So I can jump in here, and I can say, hey, I'm, I've got two repositories where I'm working with Domo, and I want both of these to be able to access my Domo Dojo access token. I could even theoretically share this access token with other um, repositories outside of my own. So if I was collaborating with someone else, maybe I might share my repository, this secret with them so that they can call um, the same functions using the same access token. Um, so it's got some pretty powerful functionality for folks you're collaborating with. And ultimately, if I share that secret with this code space, I can read it in as an environment variable. And again, this is how I get around using a .env file. Pretty powerful stuff. Pretty powerful stuff. Um, right. Let's assume I did some work. Let me git add dot git commit. I'm demoing code spaces. Now, all of these changes exist in Docker or whatever um, GitHub's using as this environment for hosting Visual Studio Code, right? It's not actually being pushed or stored in my GitHub repository until I git push. So I run git push, and let's go over to that repo. Oh, 
if I switch over to update NBS, hopefully I should be able to see that I updated a file in NBS just seconds ago. But the part that I'm really interested in showing you guys is actions. If you're not familiar with GitHub Actions, guys, this is, again, changing my life. Um, earlier this year, uh, Domo released a feature called, I don't know, it was, they, they released the ability to schedule the execution of a Domo workbook as a data flow. And why, the reason why we were excited is because I could run data flows on a schedule. GitHub Actions are the same thing on steroids. Because what happened here? Well, I have a task called CI, or I have a workflow called CI. And what's happening in this workflow? In this workflow, anytime I do a pull request or a git push, I'm going to run this CI workflow. And what does that workflow do? We're going to ignore echo secrets, because all echo secrets does is it prints my secret. And I did that because I was having difficulty making secrets work. Different story. But what it's going to do is it's going to run a task called test. And it runs test on a Docker image, I assume, uh, called Ubuntu latest. Given that it's called latest, I love the fact that I don't, again, I don't have to manage installing packages or configuring anything. It's just running on Ubuntu latest. And it's going to pass Domo password, Domo Dojo access token, and all of that as environment variables. These environment variables are configured in GitHub. I don't have to store it in a .env file. I can store it in GitHub and nobody's the wiser. And the most important part is that this task, test task is running a workflow developed by Fast AI Corporation um, that has some sort of a co continuous integration master thing. All right, so what does that actually mean? What does it look like to run the thing? Well, um, the setup job element, sorry, the setup job element is going to configure that uh, Ubuntu latest Docker image. And then it's going to say, oh, I need to run this workflow. Well, what do I need to do as part of this workflow? Well, I need to check out a file from the repo. I need to download all of these Python libraries. I need to do the thing. It runs this workflow. And at the end of it, it said, oh, hey, there was an error. At the end of the day, the purpose of the CI workflow is to just make sure my code compiles, and obviously it doesn't. So I should not commit, or sorry, I should not do a pull request to main, because I'll break my software library. I collaborate with a coworker in Domo Jupyter, and one of his biggest complaints, he's like, Jay, you wrote code that broke some of my other code. You don't have any unit testing. And Yes, I should have unit testing right in Domo Jupyter, but I'm not a real software developer. I don't know what unit testing is, right? But I love that I can download a action, a pre-configured action that will do this test for me. How do I set up these actions? Well, here in GitHub, I have a handful of actions, and one of them is actually called superlinter. What does that do? Again, this was a pre-configured uh, a pre-configured action coming from this other developer. Right? They wrote an action that does some stuff. What does this action do? Well, if I push to main or do a pull request to main, I will run a job again on Ubuntu la latest. It will check out some code and it will execute um, GitHub superlinter v4. It's going to lint my, my, my library and just make it look pretty, hopefully, unless it breaks. Um, and that's the power of Git actions. Like I can have stuff that's specific to um, checking that my code works. I can have something about 
linting. Maybe I have an integration that pulls stuff from, I don't know, Google Docs, converts it into Markdown, and pushes it into Confluence, which is another product project I'm working on using GitHub Actions. But my point being is Actions allow you to do all sorts of automation. And your on parameter can be based off of a GitHub action, or it can be set on a timer, like always execute at midnight, which is kind of like what workflows do. OK, did I cover everything amazing about code spaces? Oh, yes. One last thing. When I'm working with code spaces, again, to deploy the environment variables and make them available to the code space, I had to go to settings and go to code spaces. And then I can send the environment variables to a code space. That's not the same as configuring my actions. Actions are specific to a repository. So I have to go to the repository settings and go down to secrets and variables. And I can configure the secrets for an action. Or I can configure the secrets for a code space. Now, again, you'll notice I don't have, I'm not managing my code space secrets in Domo library settings. I'm managing those secrets at a higher level. That's something that kind of tripped me up for a while. So I just thought I'd share that with you guys. Anyway, um, GitHub code space really allows me to accelerate the speed that I'm working. It gives me. Um, access to my code base and my development environment literally anywhere in the world where I have consistent internet. Um, and it's pre-configured. I, I, can, I can stop focusing on managing stuff that I don't care about. I don't care about installing Anaconda. I don't care about trying to wrestle with getting my path set up for, 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 for Jupyter. Get for Jupyter Notebooks. I don't want to have to deal with that nonsense. I want to just be able to get in there and start typing code. And that's what Code Spaces allows me to do. All right, my name is Jay Wilson. I'm a content creator here at Data Crew. If you like the video, please thumbs up, subscribe, do all the things. Somewhere in here, we have a link to, um, what is it? Donate some coffee money um, if you're getting value out of the channel. Also, join our Slack community, join our Data Crew community, keep up to date with the content we're creating, and I'll catch you guys later.